Libra single friends, totally singles, completely singles. Thank you for joining me. I'm David. I'm doing for the first half of June your singles reading here called the Four Pillars read. Um, it's for sun, moon, rising, Venus signs, um, Libra, uh, whatever one resonates with you there. Um, so first half of... Uh, June and it's like you know what uh, whenever you see it I think with these readings up to you um, now appreciate your likes thanks everyone for subscribing and I want to point out too uh, always on Thursdays is Libra and Scorpio day it's how I do two signs uh, six days a week and uh, we also do this uh, heart spread couples reading which is up today for you guys it's if you have someone on your mind that who that reads uh, this is the look at your person so I look at the emotional nature and the intellectual, the sexual and uh, love nature, and I call it the core values and lifestyle. I call that the four pillars of uh, relationship compatibility, and try to get some idea what your person's like. If I need to clarify, I'm gonna use the Klimt deck over here. It's a little art deck, so I can clarify from a full deck as we go along. We're gonna look at you and your person. I mean, we're going to look at uh, your person, and they're going to be the one that's right for you, as you're the, uh, right for them. So this is not your next ex problem, um, next ex wife, ex husband. So it's uh, not shouldn't be a triggery read. Don't worry if you get a something like the Three of Swords. Uh, this is their emotional nature. They're coming in with the Fool, with the Page of Cups. Okay, I have to put some beads on these now because the wind's kicking up. Thank goodness, it's a little hot here. On this very be a special beach edition, Libra. So now we're going to look at their intellectual position: the Six of Wands, and the Seven of Swords. Um, that might be enough. It's not that windy. So the Fool and the Page of Cups uh, on the emotional, and the Six of Wands and the Seven of Swords, in the intellectual. So I'll get I'll go more into here. We'll do their uh, love in sex in core values and lifestyle and uh, core values. I believe in God. Don't believe in God. Want children. Don't want children. Uh, that kind of thing. Um, patriot, not a patriot. Maybe lifestyles is like, you know, do you want to have children? <laughs> do you want to live in a country, live in a city? Do you want a rambler? <laughs> I want a rambler. Uh, I don't get around so great anymore. So, um, emotionally, I really like them. Uh, don't see any problems here, like with the childhood. Um, it got to be like a youthfulness about them. Um, try to think of what, how that moon would work. <sighs> I'm not really getting the moon. Because they're just, they'd be kind of like playful and maybe kind of childlike. Maybe this is your person. I'm not looking... This would be like in a good way. Uh, you may get that often when you first meet them. Um, like even if they're older, they just have a youthfulness about them. There's a real innocence about them with this page of cups. Emotionally, this is in the core of the unconscious. This is the unconscious, the conscious, the moon, the sun, and Mercury here. Energy I see. Oh. And someone I think uh, would be genuinely nice, and with the six of uh, wands up here uh, in the mental position, um, they would be really nice, but in a very kind of outgoing way. Uh, be a fantastic salesman of any kind. Um, they're the kind of person they're probably going to be attractive, and uh, definitely there's uh, mentally they're attractive. Uh, so. It's charming in a very kind of outgoing and positive way that maybe draws people in, you know. Um, uh, they're probably not going to be a wallflower. They could be someone that's going to speak up a lot and um, definitely have opinions. Uh, it's fire sign energy, you know. Definitely got to be a fire sign Mercury here. You know, be Aries or Leo or Sag. I don't know about the moon. Pisces comes to mind. There's 
something with the moon. Maybe it's in the first house. But soft, it's Pisces. It's uh, there's someone. They're definitely not demanding, but um, um, they're very light. I don't know. They they don't. They're not demanding. Comes to mind. They're not needy, uh, but they're emotionally very available. And they're, it's sweet comes to mind. There's someone that uh, comes across as being sweet, um, but at the same time. Uh, with the six of wands too now they're not passive that's important um they're and they're confident so again if someone didn't struggle through childhood or anything so they have a natural confidence and i think what's kind of might be different what you might pick up on is they have the kind of confidence that might typically be associated with someone that's a less sweet and a little more uh, assertive maybe and uh, even like a little more intimidating or under they have a strange mixture you know where they're they're able to be like that uh, powerful maybe jock who's also like uh, modest and unassuming and uh, is genuinely kind of sweet um, and I think kind of maybe be a nice guy syndrome there you go like a nice guy and it could be same thing for a woman uh, could end up translating into uh, this is your person now so it's going to be okay but they could talk about having issues of having love too much been one that loves too much um, because they may have a lot of trust it could too be the Pisces Venus like you know people could come in that are clearly uh, dangerous and they would be like okay I, I trust you because you say you won't hurt me that kind of energy um, but with the Seven of Swords in the bottom position, uh, they keep a lot of uh, things to themselves. They keep uh, their cards uh, close to the vest. So um, they'll open up with you, I'm sure, you know. But there's going to be an element of them that they kind of keep to themselves. This is just a natural thing, the way they're built. Um, and I think we might come up with a moon now. I got Scorpio moon. Yeah. Yeah, Scorpio moon person with some kind of fire Mercury, and they might be a fire sun. So I have a sad sun and a cancer moon, so they're a fire sun with a Scorpio moon. I don't know their sun yet, but uh, with the seven of swords, um, um, they're very good at thinking strategically. Honestly, this would be a fantastic general <laughs> because I think they're the kind of people person people would follow a man or a woman i could see people look looking up to them they don't usually hold but looking up to them in um almost admiration you know um and it's just kind of because the way they are the way they look the way their voices the way they carry themselves they probably have a strong voice male or female that they really speak up uh but yet it's disarming and charming and draws people in you know it's like I get people's attention by uh, be, having this weird combination of like uh, uh, gravitas or strength and also sweetness, you know. Um, it's like when they talk, people couldn't maybe imagine them doing bad. You know, they just get a really good vibe off of them. But the important thing is, uh, uh, as you get to know them, because I, think, I don't think just they don't really talk about this. They uh, come across being kind of a little innocent. They might come across even a little naive. And they might uh, come across a little bit like a lightweight, like this sad, could be a Sagittarius sun, a little flighty, a little like lightweight, you know. But uh, when, deep down, they're always thinking, and there's like a whole lot more to them than going to meet the eye. Um, and they're definitely a Scorpio moon energy to that. It's like... Uh, to them, at some unconscious level, what's going on is this is like their superpower, is that it's disarming. Uh, people just think that they're just whatever, gadfly, party boy, girl, maybe even energy, and just don't take them seriously. Um, but, you know, in the meantime, they, they're checking it, you know, everything, every which way. And they're picking up on things, reading people, looking into the shadows, figuring things out here. Um, and uh, they feel like most of the time 
it's to their benefit to just keep that to themselves and let people think what they want. So um, it, as you very first meet them, don't make the mistake of thinking that they're lightweight, that they're shallow, uh, anything like that, because they, they might be their persona until you get to know them. And it's a, also kind of probably just their, uh, again, the way they're built, it's a kind of protective, you know, um, of uh, how they protect themselves. Now let's look at their sexual positions. Uh, we don't want to drop from the bottom. No, no, no. And that's going to be the King of Swords over the chariot. Uh, sexual and love nature. And that's going to be the Six of Swords, their core values and lifestyle. And the Ace of Pentacles. Um, make sure those don't drift away here on us. So let's take a look at this with the Six of Swords and the Ace of Pentacles in terms of core values. Um, they put a lot of faith in themselves. So I'm not saying they're going to be an entrepreneur. But if they're not an entrepreneur, there's someone that uh, Ace of Pentacles, they have a, a very specialized ability or talent resource somehow uh, that other people need and something peculiar to them um, so like uh, it's someone they, they want to be completely independent you know this is in terms of like their lifestyle um, and they're with the six of swords uh, I think this is them wanting to move away from anything that uh it's like with the ace of pentacles it's like you you're all in you think it all through uh, you have a plan you stick to it so it, everything that's an ace of pentacles involves probably a lot of work like years maybe decades maybe your whole life is like you're in college you decide i want to dedicate my life to medicine and it's a lot of work your whole life long, you know, and you stay dedicated to it. So I think there's someone's going to tell you whatever it is they do, they've been doing it that wow, well, they might be a little bit older here past the 30 first Saturn return. Um, but something they're dedicated to in a, a way that uh, even, you know, it's going to have to become part of the relationship because uh, this is something like they're married to this. Okay. What it is they do. Huh? Uh, and it might be tied up a lot into their identity, too, with the Ace of Pentacles. And, you know, uh, they'll they'll move away from anything that gets in the way. So not that kind of reading. You're not going to get in the way. But I'm saying expect to be integrated, your life, your work, into this life, this work. <clears throat> and they may, uh, in terms of that, be a, a, it may mean a little hard. Um, they may be a little uh, demanding about it, want things their way. And my advice, uh, that's maybe it's easy for me. I'm a man. I'm also a man that mostly if I had TV would watch HGTV. But um, it may be if it's uh, easier for you to give in. I mean, it could be something like they have to have a studio in the house or a library or an office and they need it to be uh, in uh, the south side or the north side. Uh, and if that's something you can give in on that, you know, maybe give in on it. And then uh, later on, you hit them up that you want the sports car. You know, I've been married a few times. I know how to work this, you know. And granted, like if you really don't, you know what, I don't really care. Sure, we'll find a place that has your office on the north side <laughs> where it's cool in the afternoons. And that's fine. And then six months later, you come home from the with your BMW Z whatever they have now, fives. <laughs> so uh, um, that kind of gives you an idea of where they're at. I'd be interested to hear from someone how that, how you find that when you find this person. You should find them on a dating site. This is a great dating site read here. <clears throat> okay. So Libras, they're coming in with the King of Swords and the Chariot. So what did I say? We're going to have some kind of fire. We may have Sag energy here. Um going to be difficult to make that cancer um, but the chariot could definitely be more sag energy so you could have a sagittarius venus here 
and I would be thinking of an Aquarius, Aquarius Venus more, and a Sagittarius Mars. So we're looking at a, a very well a Scorpio moon, pretty solid on that one, uh, and very likely a Sagittarius Sun here in um, Sagittarius Mercury. Okay, and I think. I think we're looking at, and less certain, but kind of sure, it could be flip-flop. Um, you're going to be looking at an Aquarius Venus and um, a Sagittarius Mars here. So you really get with that, the Aquarius Venus, Sagittarius Mars, you get them moving away from anything they don't consider their core. This is a core value of these pinnacles, I should say, too. And so, like, once you're part of that, that means they're going to be very dedicated to you. So I'd also wonder, you know, what happened with past relationships. This is someone that marries for life. They're one man, woman, a one woman man is to the core here. Now, uh, sexually, they're very dominant. Um, they probably like uh, to talk, uh, turns them on, um, you know. <clears throat> um uh, they're pretty open and straightforward about sex. You know, it's um, not a big deal to them, um, you know, one way or another. Say a very healthy, I just say a healthy kind of normal attitude um, with the chariot and, and Mars uh, being involved. And the way they love is going to be, I hope this works for you, um, they're not going to be clingy at all. Uh, and they're not going to be needy and... Um, uh, in terms of emotional availability, this is the one for you, so they should be there. Um, they do have this page of cups in this deep position here. So as I said, once you get to know them, they have an emotional depth. And with the Scorpio moon, if you could look that up, you don't understand them. Just Google Scorpio moon or YouTube it in, in uh, emotional depth to them that's uh, far greater than in probably uh, seems at first glance. And you're going to feel all of that, you know, uh, in the bedroom and in the way they love you and the way they care for you, you know. Um, so, I mean, they're going to be there. I mean, could you could think just the right amount, you know. It's like they're not going to be all over you or be demanding or anything like that uh, and just come at you in a very healthy way, an open way. But if you need them, they'll be there. They'll, they'll go to their page of cup place and they'll be like, what's going on? You look like you're down. Talk to me. Uh, and in the bed, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a crazy romp with an Aquarius uh, Venus and a Sagittarius Mars. Talk to me if you have that combination, <laughs> but that's some wide open shit right there. So God only knows. Another, this is another case where I could tell you, Libra, if there were anything that you had in mind over the years that you just were afraid to talk about, God, I, just you and I, you can tell me what it is, something crazy, wild, and kinky. This person will do it and maybe like it. <laughs> so that's a great reading for Libra. Give me a like, guys. I appreciate it. And I do appreciate everyone subscribing. Thank you so much.